a service of CNC Worldwide. The Daily is a service of CNC News and it's brought to you by the Greece Chamber of Commerce, providing more than 800 members with business solutions since 1984. The head of New York's Health Exchange website said 12,000 people signed up for health insurance under the Affordable Care Act in the first two days of the program. The high volume of traffic continued to give people problems and error messages as they tried to use the calculators and other online tools to buy health care. Donna Frescatori is director of NY State of Health. She says they've doubled the system's capacity after the first day. The site had 33 million hits its first day and a half. That is not unique visits, but it also is counting people who logged in repeatedly. The New York Times said experts have ruled out any cyber attack or denial of service attempt to jam New York and other state websites. The paper's experts said this often happens to new, highly publicized websites. If you build a data center that can handle the first couple of days' traffic, much of it will sit idle after the initial rush wears off. The law enforcement arm of the U.S. Postal Service is offering a reward of up to $50,000 for information about the carjacking of a mail van last weekend on Ridgeway Avenue. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service will pay for information leading to the arrest and conviction of those responsible. A letter carrier was ordered out of his van at gunpoint by three suspects in a tan gold vehicle, possibly a Mazda MPV minivan. One of the suspects drove off with the mail van, followed by the others in the minivan. The mail van was found abandoned on Flower City Park a short distance away. A package had been stolen from it. The suspect is described as a Latino or light-complexioned black male in his early to mid-twenties, about 5'9 and 150 pounds. He wore a black hooded sweatshirt and had his face covered by a scarf. These suspects are considered armed and dangerous. Calling high local property taxes a scourge across the entire state, Governor Andrew Cuomo has named a panel to find concrete ways of reducing the burden on New York homeowners and businesses. Cuomo named former Governor George Pataki, who's a Republican, and former Comptroller Carl McCall, who's a Democrat, to head the panel. The other members include former state revenue and tax commissioners, plus representatives from business, Wall Street, and from labor. One of the great challenges for government, especially today, is to include people with different opinions and different perspectives and still move forward, right? The governor said the New York State Tax Relief Commission is the next step after capping Medicaid growth and school tax growth. He wants the panel to come up with some specific steps so he can include them in his 2014 State of the State message. Bridge work will close the ramp from I-590 northbound to I-490 eastbound on Saturday. The State Department of Transportation says it's closing the ramp from 7 a.m. to about 2 p.m. while work crews repair a bridge joint on Saturday. There will also be lane closures on 490 into the can of worms. Extra travel time will be needed. The detour around is by Browncroft Boulevard. The closing depends on good weather, so it's off if it rains. Further to the north, the DOT says the right lane will be closed for much of the day Thursday, both directions across the Arundaquit Bay Bridge. That's for construction work. The partial government shutdown has affected plans to honor fallen firefighters, including murdered West Webster firefighters Mike Ciparini and Tomas Kishovka. They and all firefighters killed in 2012 are to be honored in a candlelight service this weekend at the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial in Maryland. Unfortunately, the memorial is on a training facility campus that is closed by the shutdown. Organizers have moved it to a nearby Roman Catholic college at a different time. Composer, conductor, and academic leader Douglas Lowry died Wednesday after a fight against cancer. That's some of his music that you're hearing there, a tarantella that he wrote. Lowry had stepped down just over a week before his death as the Joan and Martin Messenger Dean of the Eastman School of Music because of his health crisis. He was 62. University of Rochester President Joel Seligman hailed Lowry as a national presence in music education and a remarkable leader. Seligman said it was during Lowry's watch that the Eastman Theater was renovated and expanded and the school hired some inspiring new faculty. Lowry died nine days after retiring on September 23rd because of his health. 
A civilian employee of the Gates Fire Department was arraigned this week on 269 criminal charges, including grand larceny, falsifying business records, and offering a false instrument. Stephen Lechner, a dispatcher, stands accused of falsifying his time card by adding overtime for work he never actually performed. State police said he defrauded the district of more than $65,000 over the last five years. To the left of the player window are links to these and other stories. At the bottom of the page, links you can use to post news and information directly to us. Next news podcast is, therefore, as it happens, and updates are as necessary. I'm Bud Lowell, CNC News.